Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing by, you either put the thumbs up if you like my content, thumbs down if you don't, you share if you think it's of use to anyone else. And you subscribe if you want to see my videos. And yes, I wanted to talk about whether or not it's too late to repatriate. That rhymes. Is it too late to repatriate? There's a lot of programs going on at the moment about going back to Africa. And, you know, when you kind of think about the coronavirus and what is going on in the UK and black people feeling particularly vulnerable, especially the older black people, they're feeling particularly vulnerable at this time. And you kind of wonder whether or not, you should, how many of you should have taken advantage of the return to Ghana 2019 or return to Africa 2019 which was where the uh, Prime Minister of Ghana was inviting people from the African di diaspora to invest in the country they were giving them um, land in some cases and all you had to do was kind of work on it get the property ready by a certain period of time and yeah, Bob's your uncle, you would have been more or less on your way to settling in a new country. Um, somebody sent me a um, newspaper article. It came out in 2000, August 2019. But I decided to look at it from this perspective because this is a family who, in, who escaped, in quotes. They were living in America, African-Americans. I'm not quite sure of his background. Maybe his parents are African or Ghanaian, I don't know. Um, but he decided to uproot in 2008 to go and live in Ghana. And he did this because he was a victim of racism. He also um, was had a trumped up charge by corrupt police and he nearly lost his family. And he said, enough is enough. I've had enough of all of this treatment. I'm going to go and live in Africa. And he went to live in Africa in 2008 and he said it's the best thing he's ever done. So now what we now, 10 years, nearly 12 years later. And he is absolutely, he said he is so happy. Now, we, now we're kind of, um, apparently, I, I shouldn't say apparently, I was listening to Dr. Mumbi. And Dr. Mombi was talking about um, somebody had sent her a WhatsApp or something talking about um, people going into the Ivory Coast and trying to give up and try to give vaccines to the residents of Ivory Coast. Now, what she was saying is that Africans are a bit more alert now. You know, they're aware of Greeks bearing gifts, as the saying goes. It's an originally a Latin saying. But they're more aware. So it's not going to be that easy like it was in 1920 and with, you know, social media going around to just have people volunteer to be vaccinated, especially in Africa, where the death rate is so low. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen there. But I was just looking at it from the perspective that if you had decided or if you were deciding still to go and live in Africa, um, would you still see it as the place to be? Do you wish you had actually taken the step to go? I mean, we have Juliet, she's in Gambia, and she's living a very successful life. And I'm sure there's a lot of other black Brits living in Gambia in different parts of Africa. So um, I'm just wondering whether or not it's too late. I mean, just like here, they have their visa restrictions. You know, you can't just get up and go and not come back to the UK. It might be a similar thing six months in, six months six months here, six months there. I don't know how the UK would take that. But it's um, with all this COVID-19, it is a bit difficult. But after COVID-19, I'm just kind of throwing it out there. It might be a thought. Um these are very vulnerable times and um, it does it does make you think, where do I feel safe? I mean, I hear that Jamaica is one of the safest countries at the moment to be 
if you, um, you know, especially as far as um, COVID-19, they seem to have got it under wraps to a certain degree. They really be they really have stringent for uh, stringent um, practices in place. Um, St Vincent and the Grenadines, they're actually um, confiscating passports when you when you enter the country. God forbid if you're only going there for fourteen days, you're not going to have a holiday. But when you enter the airport, they confiscate your passport and you have to sign a form agreeing to quarantine yourself for 14 days. And it's got this whole heap of um, instructions that you've got to do and you mustn't mix with anybody, you mustn't go outside. And if you do, it could be imprisonment or a fine. And it's really quite heavy stuff, a, a proper, proper certificate if you're going to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So they're taking it seriously. I don't know how I got onto that point, but let me see now. What was I saying? Um, yeah, back in the day when religion was, um, when religion was more or less telling people that they should, um, you know, be humble and exercise humility and all that kind of stuff. I think people now are a bit more aware of what God is, where God is, and less inclined I mean you've still got masses inclined but I mean we've seen where um, pastors really exploit their um, congregation and you know making out that they're doing all these kind of healings I'm not saying there's not some that do but you have ones that are obviously exploiting the situation so for those kind of communities yes they could still get taken in somebody comes in and you know with some nice things who knows what they'll do for those nice things? We don't know. So, um, yeah, so it's really about them being aware, feeling comfortable with what they do, feeling comfortable with what they allow to happen to them and what they're willing to take in return and whether what they take in return is worth it. Um, yeah, so that family is still there. And living a very successful life. Yeah, at um at a time when black people feel vulnerable in a white man's country, is it too late to repatriate? How do you repatriate now if all your money is gone? Especially like um even if you were thinking about saving to go to Africa and then this kind of situation has occurred and you've lost your job and you don't have any money and maybe even well be be good if you've already invested the money over there because at least you know it's secure, but you're still in a position at the moment where you can't add to it um, if you're not careful. Um, so everything is timing. Mr. C Dr. Cambon and his wife and children now living a successful life in a place that was the heart of the slave trade back in the day. So it's amazing. You know, timing is everything. It really is. I mean, just think about people who decided to repatriate maybe last year or the year before. They're not in the position that we're in now. You know, so many people um, felt that they'd feel comfortable here. You know, it was a safe place to be. And now, you know, you've got people dropping like flies. Dropping like flies. One minute they're healthy, the next minute they're dead. And um, it's very disconcerting, very disconcerting. Um, yeah, like I said, Ghana returned 2019 was extending a welcome in hand to descendants of the African diaspora to settle in Ghana. And um, they even made it easier for Jamaicans to travel visa-free to Nigeria and Ghana. I don't know how many people took that up. Um, what else? So um, change always brings challenges. I know it's difficult. I mean, when you think about living in this country for so many years and then you think about Africa, it's going to be much more labour intensive, I would think, but the rewards would be better. So for those who have dragged their feet, how feasible is it for you to repatriate now? 
could you get the funds together? Is it worth it? I mean, the longer you leave it, the more expensive it gets. And I mean, a few years ago, you could go and pick up a property in Africa for relatively cheap when you think of the prices in the UK. Now the prices are up in and up in as the demand soars, like anywhere. Um, what else have I got to say? Um, yeah, people are always talking about the corrupt government in um, Nigeria and in Africa. They just make a blanket statement. But, you know, we have governments all over the world that are corrupt in their own ways. So, no, that, if that's your only reason, don't let it be a reason to stop you. Um, yeah, like I said, Dr. Gamba needed to get away from corrupt police that tried to take him away from his family. I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure if he's African. If he's African, it makes it easier because you don't have to worry so much about the visa restrictions. Or if you marry an African, um, that would make it easier. But he left in good time. Like I said, everything is timing. Oh, I'm going to do it next week. Oh, I'm going to do it next year. And then something happens and the plans go down the drain. So... It's very important. If you have an idea, start working towards it straight away. Don't defer. Don't delay. Just do it. We only have one life. And we only have one life to live. Yeah, you only have one life. So just live it. And that's all I've got to say.